morning, Sainers. Thanks for tuning into Saints TV on this Sunday. Welcome to the five things we learned for round 12, our 14 point winning against West Coast. Straight off the bat, thanks to Mornington Peninsula for being the sponsor of this series. You guys have really enjoyed it and I've really enjoyed doing it. And it's a great support to have MP Brew on top of that. Uh, make sure you check out their website. They've got some amazing products, um, really nice beverages as well, especially after a, a good win to celebrate. So check out mpbrew.com.au. All right, let's get straight into it. Number one, Wood to center half forward. Kick four goals, 22 disposals, match winner. Have we underutilized him in the front half because we've been so focused on having him up the ground? I know he's very good up the ground, but memory has been out of form. Caminiti's not hitting the scoreboard as much. Sharman's out of the team. Filippo's out of the team. Mitch Owens isn't hitting the scoreboard as much. Are we missing Mason Wood in the forward half with a Max King? He, he's a great mark. He's, uh, he's very, very aerobic at ground level. And he has a bit of a knack around goal, whether it's snap, drop, punt, whatever it might be. He just seems to find the two big sticks and, and kick truly. Maybe is that a sign yesterday? I know it was West Coast, but he stood up when we needed him to. And I think as a potential centre-half forward or third tall, he could be very, very valuable in the back end of the season. So put in the comments, let me know what you think about that. I feel like we've got enough wingers now that we don't really need to rely on Mason up the ground as much. But there's no harm in him being centre-half forward, pushing up, but then using his his uh, his physical, I guess, attributes, you know, his, his aerobic capacity, um, his endurance to, to get back and hit the scoreboard hard. Number two, Naz higher looks good. So we talked about Mason Wood maybe being deeper in the forward line and not being higher up the ground, but we've all wanted to see Naz up the ground a little bit higher. And um, we talked about it on the podcast that maybe this is a time for experiment. You know, put Sinks back to his All-Australian centre-half back position and put Naz up the ground and see what works there. And he went up the ground quite a bit. It says on the AFL app that he played 73% the defensive half. But if you look at the map, the defensive half is pretty much stops up near the wing. So he had a lot of possessions higher up on that wing, maybe half of them. And there was that notable one, you know, through the guts where he nailed it, um, hit Caminiti perfectly and it was just a great kick and a great passage of play. So I'm hoping to see that again on the weekend and maybe in the future games. Um, if we can get, you know, Sinks back, Bonner, Stocker can come back in, Webster, th those players can offer that rebound. Um, and then Naz can be with Brad Hill, with Liam Henry, higher up the ground, the, the finishing piece inside 50 that we've so desperately lacked. Number three, Windy is the ultimate team player. This guy, we say Mason Wood nearly won us the game. Windy did a pretty damn good job as well on Harley Reid. Harley Reid was torching us at halftime, and you just tell Windy what to do, and he does it. The only thing I question is, why didn't we ask him to do that sooner? Why didn't he do that from the opening bounce? That's... That's just a question, you know. Um, but it's just good that at halftime we were able to go to Windy and say, mate, we need you We need you to take out their best player. And he, he just made him invisible. Like, he had no impact on the game whatsoever. And on the flip side, Windy had five possessions in the second, I think five possessions in the third, and then seven in the last. Um, he had 19 for the game. In the last three quarters, he acquired 17 of those 19, predominantly following Harley Reid. So it found him the ball. He used it well, but he also negated the opposition's best player. So, Wendy, hold your head high, mate. That was an awesome game. Um, I think we can all be very happy with the way Wendy's going. And maybe it's a, another thing that we can do on the weekend against Gold Coast. They've got a lot of good mids. Maybe Wendy tags one of them. Number four, we've missed Hunter Clark. He only had the 18. It's on his return. But he just looked silky, didn't he? There were so many moments where I feel like other players would get tackled, go to ground, the ball would fumble out. But Hunter finds a way to spin. He has the smoothest spin in our lineup. That should be a stat. How many spins? Because he spins out of a tackle. There was, I think, a, a contest where... It might have been in the last quarter. Where I think the ball, either he dropped it or was tackled or something happened. But it was him between two, two West Coast players. And he just bent down, pretty much like spun and grabbed it at the same time. And in the exact same motion, put it on his right foot and kind of... Dribbled one towards Brad Hill, I think, or someone like that. And that's when Brad Hill hit inside 50. And that doesn't happen unless Hunter Clark puts his body on the line, spins out of it smoothly, basically untouched. They didn't tackle him. And he gets a boot onto it and puts it in the exact direction that he needs to do it. So he has a very, very unique skill set, Hunter Clark. And none of our midfielders have that skill set. So I'm really excited to have him back. Fingers crossed he can just 
have a good run now and get the next 10 games in. Because if he does, I think um, we'll hopefully be seeing a very good and very strong Hunter Clark in, in the next season. And number five, the season is still there to be attacked. So whatever, you can take that in whatever way you want. I'm not saying it's there to make finals. I'm not saying we're going to make a run and make a prelim like GWS and Carlton last year. But what I'm going to say is we took the game on in the last quarter. We knew that this game was important for ourselves, not in the context of the season, but for the club as a whole, for the fans. It was important. And we went for the win. We wanted to win that game. We didn't sit on our hands and wait for West Coast to throw a few punches. We threw them all. And you know what? We dominated that last quarter. So I want us to take that same mentality and approach into every game we play for the rest of the season. Just attack the games. Attack the opposition. Want to win. And let's see what happens. Because I can't say we've done that all season. But it was a sign, a really good sign, in the back end of the third and the fourth, all of the fourth. Um, and it was just awesome to watch. 84 tackles. We kicked over 80 points. Kicked five goals in the last quarter when the game was on the line, really. Um, and a lot of people would have had money on West Coast to take that game away. But we put the foot forward quickly and accelerated away and, and got the four points. So the season's still there to be attacked. And I uh, can't wait to watch it. So... That's the five things uh, I learned from round 12. I'll quickly round them up. One, Wood to center half forward. I think could be really handy. Two, Naz Hire looks good. Three, Windy's the ultimate team player. Four, we've missed Hunter Clark. And five, the season is still there to be attacked. So put your five in the comments. Uh, I can't wait to read them. And thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one next week. So take care, Saners. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. And as always, go you mighty Saners. See you guys. That sound.